We're back again with another interesting episode. And uh, I always promise that I'm going to bring guests that will give us value, uh, teach us things, and probably motivate us. Today I have, we're still going to stay in the realm of real estate, but I'm going to, talk, I'm going to bring someone that will talk a little bit about, about the management side. Today I have one of the managers with Royal Page Signature, uh, one of the top brokerages in the GTA. I have today uh, Mr. Darren Perret. Yes. Did I pronounce that properly? You pronounced it spot on, bud. That's great. <laughs> I, I know I, I might introduce you to my audience, but you are the best person to kind of introduce yourself. Who is Darren Parrott? Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here for sure. And uh, yeah, talking about my journey, I guess. And, uh, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy that came from, you know, a corporate world uh, of uh, finance okay. originally. Uh, that was sort of my background. I was in management there, you know, taking, um, you know, taking on teams and managing teams specifically. Um, and, and then I joined, uh, I got my real estate license in 2004. 2004. That's yeah. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, as of last month, actually, it was May uh, 2004. So wow. just celebrate 20 years, which is 20 years nice in the industry. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, I feel like a dinosaur, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually uh, came across this brokerage, Royal the Pace Signature. Okay. At the beginning, or you were with another brokerage? No, other brokerages. Yeah. So okay. I was with, uh, you know, Home Life. Uh, I was with uh, Century 21. My original brokerage, I joined with my brother-in-law. Okay. He, he was a realtor at the time. And he said, uh, you know, get your license and let's let's work together. And I said, well, that would be fantastic. <laughs> you know, someone I, I know in the industry that can help coach me. And because that's, you know, as a new agent is really kind of the main thing that you're looking for when 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 you get into this business. Because, I mean, we do all go through the schooling, but it doesn't teach you the real fundamentals of, of how to business. run a business. Exactly. exactly. And there's exactly. so many hats that we got to wear here as real estate agents. And so that was a nice opportunity for me, and and that's what I did. So I ended up joining uh, Remax, okay, in Richmond Hill, and that lasted one transaction. One transaction, probably yeah. a month or two months. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. I got a I got a deal very quickly, which was through my brother-in-law. Okay, uh, it was uh, his aunt had passed away, and he wanted me to take the deal. And because he didn't want any family issues or anything like that. And I said, I'd be happy to. This is great. You know, like, you know, one month in the business and I've already got a listing. And I ended up getting a buyer on a double end, if you can believe it. Wow. You so represent both of them. Yeah. People were calling me off for realtor.ca to come show the house. And I did. And I met this lovely couple and we did the deal. And then they came back for a final showing. And... You know, so I, I come to the house, I let them in, and, and of course, everything is kind of cleared out at that time mm -hmm. now. And he says, where is the freezer? And I'm like, and I was so new and green, <laughs> I didn't even know how to fill out a form back then. So oh, he, my brother-in-law did it for me. Okay. And I said, I said. Uh, That's a good question. Yeah, good question. <laughs> you know, where, where is it? I mean, hold on a second. Let me just uh, call my broker, uh -huh. which I was calling my brother-in-law. Brother. I get him on the phone. I said, where's the freezer? And he starts laughing. He says, it's in my basement. I said, what's it doing in your basement <laughs> when it should be in this basement? This Client's asking for it. He says, ah, just tell him it was broken and we removed it. And so. right then and there, I was like, I'm not working with you anymore. Like, oh this, my is, God. this is not the way I do business. And so I went back to the client who loved me. Like I had a That's great relationship. It. You know, you know you what I mean? You don't want to break that relationship. Exactly. Right? And I went back to him and I said, hey, it was broken. We removed it. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to replace it? Did you, did you well, give them that promise? And he looked at me like he was going to kill me. <laughs> I was actually scared. Like, and I said, I said, listen, what I want you to do, stay, you know, let's, let's, let's go outside, sit in your car, give me, and I knew there was a, at the time, there was a Sears okay. department store. Oh, okay. Literally like five minutes from the place. I shot over there. I grabbed the $500 gift card, came back. I said, hey, listen. I want you to get yourself a brand new one. Brand new one. And he looked at me. He was so disgusted. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is my first transaction. That's what, and, and, and my brother-in-law. I get at it. At the time. That's, Thank that's God stopped. my sister divorced them. <laughs> Not because of that, but that was maybe one of the reasons. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I, I, 
after I gave them the card, we ended up, they closed the transaction. That's amazing. We all got paid and, and you know, I won't get into the commission side of things, <laughs> that how he kind of screwed me over there too. <laughs> I drove up to his house that night and I said, hey, brother-in-law, brother-in-law, we're cool. I'm well, still we, your brother-in-law. Well, business, business wise, partners, we're it's, done. it's done. Wow. And as I'm driving home that night, I'm having a panic attack thinking, what have I just done? I'm now in a business, in a business by myself. By myself. Oh. 100% commission. How am I going to do this? That's feeling. Yeah, it was. It was. It was It was not a great way to start, but it did set the tone for how I really wanted to operate. Mm, okay. And I took the philosophy moving forward that the customer is my main priority. It's it's because if if you do the right thing by the client, the money follows. Exactly. Like you don't have to worry about commission. The commission will always come behind it. Exactly. If you take care of your customers well, the money will follow we'll you follow. and probably more money than you can handle because that's, that's true. You're treating them with respect, you're treating them professionally. Um you're helping them close no. the the biggest close financial the, transaction. Exactly. Right? Buy or sell, whichever one they're trying to do. Right. Right. And, um, you know, money money doesn't matter at the time. It's making sure we take care of them first priority, right? And I, and I think, you know, I, I want to come back on w one thing you said, like mm -hmm. the customer should be your priority. I remember when I started, right, as a new agent, I was looking on how I can get started, mm -hmm. how I can let people trust me. It got to me very quickly in my first month that it's not about people who should trust you. It's about what do you want to do for them to trust you? And I was with another brokerage then, not right. to throw a page. Yeah. And I, I joined the brokerage because a friend of mine who owns a brokerage, I used to help him on uh, on some side of uh, technology tools to help him to understand that. And that was when the interest of becoming an agent came up. So I, when I got the license, I joined his brokerage. But he has a brother okay. that we're very cool, like other brother that is very cool with me. He talks to me and he would just come to where I used to sit and make calls and... We joke for like five minutes, but within the five minutes or 10 minutes, it's going to now tell me something that will help me. Okay. Without like trying to coach me, he's yeah. trying to give me something. <laughs> so he said something like, I was beginning to feel like I was making calls, nothing was coming first month. Second month, I was about to get a, a pre-con deal. Someone screwed me over, the builder screwed me over, I lost three deals on that. Then he said, okay, Aziz, do you want to start doing rentals? And I'm like, oh, okay, how can I do that? Then he explained to me, it's exactly similar. Mm -hmm. It's just like you're not getting brokerage, uh, yeah. getting mortgage. Yeah. Do this, do that. And I did it. And I started doing rentals. And I realized that it's not about the size of the commission. Mm -hmm. It's about how did that person feel about your service? Yes. And the reason why I want to come back to that is I have helped about three of those renters now to buy property. In fact, after our podcast today, mm -hmm. I'm going to one of the listings that I got mm -hmm. with a client that I met a year and a half ago to help them to rent property. Okay. And now I help them to sell, buy property uh, four months yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And then they have a townhouse that I'm selling now sure. from a renter. Yeah. So now it's not about the renter. It's about how did you treat them? Yes. Before I met this client, he has like two agents that he has used before in mm -hmm. transaction and everything. Mm -hmm. There is one thing that I might have done that I might have said. I think it's more of, you know, the education part. And it's one of those things I learned from Jazz, Jazz Tucker. Yeah, yeah. Like leading with education. So mm -hmm. I really understand what you're saying about, and it's even funny that 20 years ago is what you experienced that. And it's still relevant in the business today. Right. The commission, it's, it's sometimes in what we want to put as the first thing, but it's right. not. Right. It will follow that thing. The two transactions I've done with this client, I didn't ask for it. They right. called me because yeah. of the first rent I had them to do, right? Right. So you talk about, you know, I think you've mentioned some of the things that are happening even in the industry today, mm -hmm. like some agents screwing over other agents mm -hmm. or not being trustworthy with the other mm -hmm. client. Mm -hmm. What in the last 20 years mm -hmm. have you seen that is different in the real estate business? As an agent, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about you as a in management as well, now sure. in real estate. What do you think have changed in terms of how people do business compared to when you were doing it 20 years ago mm -hmm. and the way people do it now? Yeah, I think I think probably the biggest change for me is uh, the education of the public. Okay. And what I mean by that is the technology that's available okay. online to just the average person. You know, there's a lot of lot of sites out that, you know, we, we can get, you know, 
the sale prices of things and the, and, and the data is kind of more accessible now, yeah, right? Yeah, more accessible. Uh, you know, uh, House Sigma with their their average, for, you know, what they think the market or the price of the price value of the be, home yeah. is. And people are doing more research online than ever. And when I was, you know, first starting off, it was, you know, they really needed to call me to get that information. Mm, so okay. it was like an easy trigger. Uh, to send communications out that, you know, if you're looking for information and you have any questions, you know, by all means call me. And it was like, yeah, I do need to call you because I don't know where to get that information. I can't get that information unless I'm actually speaking to, to, you, a, right? to a real, you know, real estate licensed professional. And so, you know, just looking over the years, it's just become harder and harder for new agents okay. to, um, like, if you're not on point, you know, if you're going to a listing presentation right now and you haven't done your homework, and your research, and you and you can speak to every single aspect, comp, pricing, strategy, marketing plan. You're you're going in there blind. Forget it. Like because they are they already have a lot of the data. Seventy five percent of the information at least. You, so you got to come up with that twenty five extra that shows that you are a professional, yeah. and that you have the knowledge to take them through this transaction. So I would say that that is probably the biggest. Uh, change over time okay. is is the ability to for them to know a lot more information. And it's but do you think that technology? Because a lot of us real estate agents, and I think I think even all the human being, do you think we are too rely we rely a lot on the technology mm -hmm. that we forget the human aspect of the business? Because everyone says social media, and I will be honest with you, social media has really helped my business. I've helped my brand personally. Sure. But one thing I realize is. When you depend on it too much, mm. you forget the personal aspect of it. Yes. Do you think agents or business owners, real estate business owners, brokers, do you think they're over-reliant on, on technology? Yeah, you know, I would say some do. I mean, I know at, at Royal LaPace Signature, we like to have a, a combination of the two. I okay. think, you know, since the beginning of time, okay, since the first transaction was ever sold through a realtor, it's the relationship built between you and that client that's going to carry you through the deal. That's true. If somebody cannot trust you, and the social media and all that kind of stuff, it helps you with that kind of branding. image and branding and look. Hmm. But if you're not talking to them, like there's only so much you can do with a still image or a video online. And are they watching it or not? Do they just see you and you know move forward move to forward. the next deal or the next uh, you know whatever Instagram image? Okay. You have to be communicating with your clients. You have to have personal conversations. Okay. You have to be face to face, having a coffee and lunch or whatever with them. With them, because there's so much more that can come out of a good conversation than it can just by viewing a post hmm. or or explaining something during a post. That's true. For us right now, being on video and doing this podcast is is is, is better than Instagram, Facebook, images, video, whatever you do on there, because we're having a conversation. That's true. People can see our personality, understand who we are personally. You can dig in. You can do follow-up questions. This is great. Uh, and me and you right now, live, you know, I know the people are watching on video, but we're live. We're having a great conversation. Exactly. Right? We're, we're getting to know each other, which is great. It, it's this human connection uh, that, that I feel that is slowly slipping away with people nowadays and, hmm. and younger generation. They just, they depend too much on too the much social media. Too much on the Yeah. And for me, this, this is what I see social media does. And I'm saying this from the feedback I've gotten from my clients. It serves as a place to kind of solidify the trust they are beginning to have for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of one of my clients that we helped to get property in Cambridge. I did a video, I put it online on my Instagram and you know, just always put it there like that. Mm -hmm. And we were in a showing and the brother was asking about a video that he watched. Mm -hmm. So he asked his sister, where do you, we watch a video that he was talking about this. And the lady, the sister was like, what are you saying? That is a this video that we saw. Right. <laughs> I never thought they, they were watching any of my videos. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. never, I would never think they're watching any of my video because mm -hmm. you're not following me. Right. You understand? Yeah. But you know, my video will have 600 view, 1000 view. And I have at that time, maybe 500 followers. So definitely someone else is viewing it. So, and I've gotten like calls from someone else that would be like, I watch your videos and I'm like, I don't even know you. So I realized it's kind of a place for people to confirm, okay, I'm going to work with this person. Right. They're going to see a lot of videos. Yeah. Or they're going to feel like, okay, let, I've seen five of these people. Let me call three of them. 
Now, the video will now serve as a point to say, okay, I think he knows what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So relying on social media, I think I think personally, a lot of business owners and agents have done that. Mm -hmm. I try not to do it. In fact, I don't try. I, I make sure I won't post every day Yeah. because I have life. Yeah, yeah. And if you yeah. keep posting every day, I mean, you can schedule the post to go out. We know all that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I don't even want to talk about real estate. So I think the human connection for me, all the listening, all the... The, the, the buyers that are about, I, I realize it's that personal conversation mm -hmm. that wins it mm -hmm. for me. But I, even, even just to touch on that, you know, they're watching your video and video shows your personality. That's true. And now they're connecting with you that way. So it's super important. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this, you know, social media or whatever is not important. It is, absolutely. Video specifically. They're connecting with you and they're saying, you know what, I really like this Aziz guy. He's really, you know, he's, he's, he's professional, he's, he's funny, he's like me, he's like, you know what I mean? And that's, that's almost the first part of the human connection. And that's where you develop that relationship. They already like you now. Now you need to get together and, and, and knit, knit the relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Sure. When I joined this brokerage, mm -hmm. you are the first person that I had conversation with. That's right, yeah. Because you're part of the management <laughs> team and yeah. you... You know, take care of the new agents, the yeah. agent that are with the brokerage. You said you've been in the business for over 20 years now, or mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you've been in the management for about five years. Yes. So 15 years as an active real estate agent. Yeah. You go out there, uh, you know, show properties and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've shown property in the last five, even, even if you've done maybe with friends or family. Yeah, yeah. Doing the management side now, what do you see as a different from your life as an agent, being an active agent, going out there? Do you think you enjoy the management part more? And what do you actually do for Royal Page with Royal Page Signature? When I was approached uh, by the management team here, they, they knew my background in finance that I talked about okay. earlier and management. And they were looking for a new manager to uh, take care of the Don Mills office. And so they approached me and, you know, I was successful as a, as a real estate agent. And so there's a real hard stop right there where I'm sitting there going, I love helping people. I love coaching people. I loved being a manager back when I worked in finance. Uh, I liked having a team. I liked having people come to me and, and, and sharing ideas, which I really have a passion for. So it, it was always on my mind to maybe become a manager. Okay. Um, but maybe not at that time. But because it was Roy LePay's signature that came to, you. <laughs> that came to me, and I knew how successful the, the brokerage was, and it was this one that they wanted me to manage, the Don Mills office. I had to really stop and say, you know, if I, if I don't take that, like I've been in it five years now, the person that could have taken it if I didn't would have been in here probably five years because it is such a, a rewarding position to help people come succeed, through, yeah. succeed and, and hear the success stories and come back and thank you and say, hey man, what you told me worked and I love that. So I said to myself at that time, even though I was doing really well as an agent, I was like, you know what? I'm thinking about doing this maybe. change in maybe 10 years from now. And now you have the opportunity But I have the now. opportunity now. And if I, don't, if I don't jump on this, I might not get it again before I retire maybe. Because the person that comes in here could, could do it for the next 20, 25 years and it would never come up again. So it took me, it was funny, so I had you know, interviews with Chris and Jeff and Sam and you know, all, the, all the managers. And you know, they're like, you know, what do you think? And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, I, like I'm gonna be nine to five, Monday to Friday, you know, like I'm used to having flexibility, flexibility in my schedule yeah. and playing golf on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, but uh, so anyways, it took me about five weeks to make a decision. Five I've, weeks? Yeah. And wow. I, f I finally said, you know, let's do it. And at first it was a transition, you know, like it was, man, I'm here, you know, I'm seeing all the realtors, you know, waving at one o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm saying, oh, you know, where are you going? You're going to the pub, you're going to, the, <laughs> you're going to your kid's soccer match or whatever, because you can do that when you, when you have flexibility. And that was the, the hardest part. But over time, over the last five years, I, I, I made a, a great decision. Like right. it's been, everything and more that I, I thought uh, that it would be. And, uh, you know, just just the, you know, the owners, Chris and Jeff here, are, are just some of the greatest guys. And I'm not just saying that because I get paycheck from them. <laughs> they truly are. And then you know. I know. Like, I mean, they I they know. are just magnificent human beings and and take care of their, their staff. 
exactly. and take care of the brokerage and the realtors. And it, it's just been a, it's just been great. And, and being part of the, the new recruits, mm -hmm. I really enjoy that because it, it's almost like a challenge to me now to say, okay, you're coming in brand new. How can I help, help you succeed and succeed. move you and, and maybe teach you some of the things that I learned as a, as a realtor exactly. that made me successful that I could pass on to you. And now I do the, the new agent coaching as well, uh, or sorry, training with the accelerator program. Yes. And I've just kind of made that my own and added things over time. And it's just been great. It's been a great. So it kind of work out for you because you say you like, you know, coaching and mentoring people, mm -hmm. teaching them, you know, how to do the things. These mm -hmm. kind of work out for you. Mm -hmm. Do you miss being an agent on the field, like going there to show property? Yeah, I love that. I mean, one thing that I absolutely love doing is, is doing deals and, and negotiating them. And the other side, the flip side of the thing is, 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 the, is the reward with the client. Yes. You know, when you do a great job and, you, and you've, you've, you've negotiated a great deal and you've, you've, you've met their ex expectations or exceeded them, that, that, I love that. Um, but I'll tell you, being on the other side of the table of management and when agents come in and they're talking about, you know, things that blow up on a deal. Yes. They had a deal, it lost a deal, they, they, they you know, they forgot something, a clause or whatever. And, and just, there's, I would say, you know, speaking from experience as a realtor and speaking from experience as a manager, 10 in 100 deals okay. are unicorn deals where everything is just perfect. Perfect, yeah. Nothing goes wrong. It's very rare. There's very, always something. Very rare. <laughs> right? You Trust know what me, I'm talking about, right? There are some conversations <laughs> you're going to have with your clients, and at the back of them, are like, I hope this conversation is not going to make them upset. Right. Or want to go out, go, you know, deal with someone else. It's, it's sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. want them... It's a sensitive conversation sometimes, right? Right. A seller that is thinking my property is worth nine hundred thousand dollars, yeah. But the market is saying your property is eight hundred thousand dollars, right? And you have a deal of eight hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars, which you, as an agent, you've educated them and say you're getting more than what is worth. Mm. You're at the back of your mind, you're saying nine hundred, but the market is not saying that. And we've seen that over the last two years. You know, mm -hmm. people that sold property, yeah, that is worth seven hundred thousand for nine hundred thousand dollars two years ago. And the next neighbor want to do the same thing in 2024, mm -hmm. and is expecting the nine hundred thousand, and it's right. not. So it's sometimes it's a conversation that you have to like. Even at the end of the day, when it, you finish the transaction, it goes smoothly. You look back at it and like that part of the conversation. If we didn't take care of it, it would have kind of yeah. blew up in our face, Super right? Important. Okay. So you still miss it, but do you still? I mean, I don't know if you want to, if it's if you're allowed to say that on the camera, but obviously, are you still? doing even if it's family deals or you have agent that you're like okay you do this now you see the transaction sometimes yeah so you know i get that question all the time right you know you're coming to, you know and, and and not to toot my horn but i was a successful agent so i had a lot of client base and what i said when i when i took on the management role because i knew there'd be agents that would come hey where's, where's your deals you know do you, have any, <laughs> do you have any referrals type of thing and i had a friend who started with me back in 2004 like from high school oh okay and we went to every brokerage together. Together. Mm. And he works for Signature. Wow. So I just give them to him just to make it easy peasy. If I have a past client that calls on me, I just give it to him and they all go to him because he's, he's my amazing. best friend. Yeah. Uh, and it just, because if I gave one to you and then I gave it, and all of a sudden it gets around the office, it's going to be like, well, why is Darren giving away deals? And then it just blows up. So you're not going to so, give me deals. Is that what you're saying? I might slide you one. <laughs> uh, but I just try to keep it nice and clean and easy. Yeah. I did sell my mother's house exclusively in my, in my management time, and I sold my sister a place. Okay, so it's kind of so that's the family only deals. That, yeah. But the, the, the good thing is you enjoy the part of real estate you're doing now, yeah. which, is, which is really amazing. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Yeah. If you look back now and say, okay, today, mm -hmm. looking at what you've learned as an agent, as a management, mm -hmm. the kind of people you've worked with, the deals you've done, mm -hmm. if you want to start today as a new agent mm -hmm. and you understand what you understand today, mm -hmm. what do you think you would have done differently? What do you think you didn't know at that time that you know now that you'd be like, because I'm asking this question for new agents. Yeah, yeah. You understand? I always, well, you know, I'm, I'm three years in the business now, and when people kind of ask me a question, I have like four people that I want to get be an agent, and 
I always tell them, I'm like, you should learn from two people yeah. or even three. Mm. One, someone that has really succeeded in real estate. Mm. Two, someone that has been in business for like more than five years. Mm -hmm. And three, someone that has been in business for just one year and you're still doing it. Right. And the reason I'm asking is if you see someone that's done one year, you have fresh information about what is happening now, how they can, how you can fail or succeed in that one year. Mm -hmm. But you, you've seen everything. 20 years, that's mm -hmm. two decades. Yeah. If you're starting today, yeah. what will you do differently or what will you set in place as a new agent, knowing mm -hmm. what you know now? Yeah. And I made the critical mistake of, you know, we talked about you know, joining my brother-in-law's because mm -hmm. it was the easy route. It was easy. And, and I get a lot of agents that come in here, and, and kudos to them. You know, they come in here and they say, well, look, I'm talking to four other brokerages. Yes. I've made up my mind. If I could go back in time to that first day, I would research, research, research to find a, a quality brokerage that offers training, that offers mentorship, that offers support from management. Because when I look back on, on and it's not to slag any of the, the other brokerages that I work for, they're all great. They're all they great, all you're gonna learn something. Yeah, you're gonna learn something. Me. But if, if I could do it all over again, if I could find a place like, Sign and I only speak about Signature because I know what Signature does and how, how we operate, and they do run a great shop here. They have all the training. They have weekly training. They have- Two weekly training. You know, your two weekly training. They have, you know, tiered training. Exactly. Depending on where you are in your career. Accelerator, Summit, Champions, Leaders. I would look for something like that. And I'm not saying that, you know, everyone to join Royal LePay okay. Signature, but look for a brokerage like Royal LePay Signature that offers these tools to you. Um, but, you know, you talk about what I would say to somebody new. Yes. And the bottom line and what I've seen in my life, in the management, and any walk of life, is if you don't have the drive hmm. to be able to execute on a plan, whatever that is to you. At least a plan. We have a ton of plans here that we can give you. <laughs> exactly. Lots of training, then we can give you ideas and, and marketing, whatever. I can give you everything, but I can't go home with you and pick up your phone and make your calls to your client. I can't go out and door knock with you because, I, you know what I mean? You have to have that in you and the drive and this, the willing to do it or you're, you're done. And, mm -hmm. I, and it sounds harsh, but if you don't have the attitude, you got to be, and, and I feel sometimes that you're born with it. You know? Do you really think, because when you say, sorry that I stopped, you said yeah, born yeah. with it. Because sometimes yeah. I feel like the only thing that you were born with mm -hmm. will be to do things with ease. Without even so much training. And I'm Everybody's gonna use... born with that. What is it? <laughs> Everybody's born with that. <laughs> Everyone wants the easy route. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to just use the sport mm -hmm. life. Yeah, like no, no, you, absolutely. You, you see I love some, sports. some footballers, yeah. like soccer players, mm -hmm. they play football. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to use like Cristiano, I don't know even Cristiano Ronaldo yeah, and course. Messi. Yeah. I always feel like Messi is someone that is talented mm -hmm. naturally. 100%. I think he might not do training. I don't even know much about soccer. Yeah. I think he might not do training yeah. and he will still be good. Yeah. But Cristiano Ronaldo is someone that work hard to get there mm -hmm. and stay there and maintain it. Mm -hmm. Somehow, and this is not like, you know, we're talking about real estate, not about sport, mm -hmm. not to shade any of the yeah, two yeah. amazing, you know, footballers. Yeah. I feel like I, I respect Cristiano Ronaldo more than him, not because I think he's not more talented. I think mm -hmm. hard work, mm -hmm. no matter how much talent, like if you're talented, mm -hmm. Hard work let you stay there consistently mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for a long period. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you have to work every day, but the passion, as you said, the drive mm -hmm. to do it. For me, the only thing, yeah. apart from my family, obviously, the only thing that I love more than real estate is cooking. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I love cooking. Cook I love cooking. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. if, you, if I take cooking out of it, which I'm not doing as a business, I love every conversation about real estate. Mm -hmm. Is it about the investment? Is it about the... You know, what you could do that could go wrong and how you could solve. I, I love the conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love long drive to go see property, investment property and all those things. Mm -hmm. I just like it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of passion is there. Mm -hmm. And that make push me. Yeah. Even if I'm a good communicator, if I'm a good, like people like me, mm -hmm. but if I don't work hard and push it, mm -hmm. I think I might not get there. So when you said people are born with it, mm -hmm. I feel like, yes, people are born with it, but kind of working out to stay consistent might be the key. Yeah, like, and when I say you're born with it, I mean, I'm talking that upper echelons of, of, of agents okay. that are just killing it. Like Messi and Ronaldo of the real estate world. 
if you listen to interviews with those two uh, sports figures or any high talented sports figure or anybody that is really succeeding, even business people, whatever, it is, the mindset is completely different than someone who's not as successful. That's all I'm saying. Like, Christian Ronaldo guaranteed that guy goes to the gym every day and he eats everything perfectly. Exactly. It's measured out, it's, it's exact carbohydrates, whatever, like he's going next level. Exactly. Even if he feels in the dumps, he's going to going the gym. To do it. He's going to do it. That's that, that's that, that passion, that something that he was born with, I think. And I'm just speaking about me. as the way I look at things. You either want to be number one and be the best and you're going to, you know, you have goals or whatever. Like, I'm going to do 50 deals this year and I'm going to, whatever it takes, I'm going to do 50. If you start the year with that and continue to work on that, you, you're either going to do it or you're not going to do, do it. Yes. But I tell you, if you have that drive and passion and execute, you will do it. That's true. Human beings are, are crazy uh, what our minds can do when we, when we set them right. That's so. all. You've talked about how to choose the right brokerage, mm -hmm. right? And you said we should look at all these programs. What are they doing? What are they offering? Mm -hmm. But sometimes from someone that, I've, that I that did exactly what you're asking now three years ago, mm -hmm. when I want to join the first brokerage, even though I know I'm going to join him, mm -hmm. I spoke with like three other brokerages. Okay. But I still don't know who will give me the right information. Mm -hmm. Is he the top agent in that brokerage? Is he going to be... No, just the people in management like you or reception. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think I should have? I should talk to because I, I will tell you I joined Royal Page, which is quite different from researching Royal Page signature. Mm -hmm. I did not. Right. I'm just lucky to now be in the best brokerage. <laughs> right. I know Jazz, yeah. Jazz Tucker, yeah. who is the you know as the biggest team in the brokerage. Yeah. Through a friend that sent me his reels, and I watched his video for three, four months. I never messaged him. I was still with other brokerage. But when it reached a time that I'm like, I'm ready to, to move, yeah. I reached out to him. Mm -hmm. And when I went to him, I said, I want to join your team. I ended up joining, stayed there for a year, learned a lot of things there. But when I came to him and said, Jazz, I want to join your team, mm -hmm. you know, he asked me a few questions, why this and that, obviously because of him. But he said something. He said, what about you join the brokerage without even joining the team? Because I think the brokerage has amazing thing that even might be more than the team. Right. But obviously, with the love I have for that man at that time, I said, I still want to join your team, right? right. But, and I was lucky to now join his team, now join the Pay directly, now not with any team now. Yeah. But if I haven't done it through him, I don't know how I would have known that Royal Page is good. Right, right. Who do you think I should have spoken to, if not for Jazz, mm -hmm. that I wanted to join his team? Mm -hmm. Do you think I should have just go research some agent and talk to them about the brokerage? Or what, how would you have done it as an agent? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's a great question. And I think, you know, you always want to speak to the people that are working here. Okay. And I think, you know, once you've kind of narrowed down your search or you think you've got the right one, two, three brokerages in mind, then I would research their website to find some agents and just ring them up and say, hey, I'm thinking about joining. What's your opinion, good or bad? It st stays confidential between us. And, you know, they're either going to give you an exciting conversation or they're going to trash it completely because they're not getting what they what? signed up for. Hmm. So the best way to, to identify it is, is just really speak to the agents to that the are working agents. there. But ones that are actually doing some business as some well. Business because you really need to understand the, the back-end processes and, and uh, transactional side of things too for a brokerage. It's not just the management, it's the support staff as well that's going to help you with uh, your business, right? So you want to know all aspects of, of the business if you can. So, What's next for Darren? Mm. To continue with Roller Page, to continue to build, even if it's going to be with Roller Page or not with Roller Page, you know, that decision stays with you. Yeah. But what's next? What's your vision for either yourself or yeah. even for the agent, for the, for the, for the brokerage? Mm -hmm. What's next for Danny? Yeah, you know, it, it's a great question, and I've always had future goals for myself. I really, truly want to stay in the management role. Uh, I really, I've really come to, to love it. Um, and, you know, I talk about, you know, Chris and Jeff, just their philosophy, always trying to uh, push forward and 
and shape the, the, the brokerage that is always ahead of other brokerages. That's their mindset, and I like being a part of that, and they allow me to contribute to that and have input and, and take my input and actually implement and my input, it, whereas it. a lot of times you're in management, you know, maybe in the you lower go, management, yeah, yeah. you give ideas, but it's already made up. The decision's <laughs> already made These guys actually take my, my, my opinion, uh, opinion in, into account. So cool. I love that, and it makes me feel like a bigger part of the brokerage, which is nice. So, yeah, so for now... I'm staying put. I'm hoping uh, the book will get better. Yeah, right. 100%. To be honest, I genuinely appreciate your time here. The first time I ever met you when I joined the brokerage, as joining the team that I joined at that time, you, you've been amazing. When I want to move and leave the, the team to General page directly, mm -hmm. I came to you, you gave me a lot of advice, and you kept your promise. I remember I asked you for something. Yeah, yeah. And you said, Aziz, I'm not supposed to give you, but can you give me, can you promise me you're going to do well? <laughs> and I'm glad today I, I haven't reached where I want to be. Sure. But I think I've got close to where you say, okay, this is what we discussed. Mm -hmm. You've gained, gave, gave me some, you know, impactful advice and opinion and guidance. And I think a lot of agents can say exactly the same thing with you in the brokerage. I appreciate that. I appreciate Jeff and, uh, and Chris as well, and Sam mm -hmm. will always take care of the training every week. I hope, you know, to continue with the brokerage, I hope we're going to be able to do more great things together, especially you as part of the management, and I appreciate your time today. Oh, well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It was so fun uh, just having a nice chat with you, <laughs> and I appreciate the kind words, and we really enjoy having you here at the brokerage. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, all thank the best in the, in the future. Thank you. Thank you.